Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to the third <laughs> annual sad. panel discussion of What Can I Do With a Major In? where we'll be sharing insight from professors in various disciplines um, and answering the questions of what can you do with a major in our respective fields and disciplines. Um, each of us will talk for a few minutes. We're going to answer the same questions, uh, briefly discuss your academic background and how you became interested in your field. What major should a student decide to transfer do you think are most related to your program of study? What career options do you think students may pursue with a degree in your academic area with an associate's degree, with a bachelor's degree? What do you see as possible career path with this degree? And what recommendations do you have for a student consider earning a degree in your area? So hopefully that will be illuminating and insightful for all of you. And we have a wonderful host up here today, starting with? John Schaefer. Professor of? Professor of uh, Communication and Media. Also, Judith de Graffenry, Fine Arts. <laughs> you got it. I think, I think you guys get here. Fine Arts, all right. I love, what am I? Uh, Rick Erickson, I, I mean, I guess I would say digital media production, except now it's new media production. Uh, it's very confusing. You know, it You're is very changing. confusing. It was interesting that it wasn't even listed on the little thing. So I was like, I don't know. I'm the guy who does. Imaging, animation, video, I want to say audio, but you're, you didn't say audio. You, you're also, well, you kind of put it under the Well, audio. I put that under media. Yeah, so that's all under that media we'll, production. We'll have to divide up. Yeah, I'm about, I got to step on, I'm going to be, st I don't want to, you know, take a seal oh, your you're, thunder. You're doing multimedia digital arts. All right. I know, I know that, that. yeah. Anyway, that's my <laughs> shtick, you guys. <laughs> We're talking a bunch. And I'm Adam Floridia, professor of English. And not last but not least, I'm Angelo Graviano, uh, professor of uh, French, Italian, and Spanish, and cultures. All right. Uh, yeah. I have a quick question. So, like, there are courses for foreign language. Okay. Yeah. What's the question? I said so. There are so there are courses for foreign language. Oh yeah, we offer language courses every semester, winter break and summer uh, as well. well. That's interesting to know. That's good. <laughs> We're already educated people. All right, so I'm opening up. Like I said, we're doing um, uh, all the same questions. So to describe my academic background and how I became interested in my field, I have a double major in secondary education and also English. Um, growing up, I always wanted to be a teacher. I envisioned myself as an elementary school teacher because I like kids and I'm a big goofball. Um, I fell in love with English in college and decided that I wouldn't be able to have literary discussions and talks about analysis and theme and whatnot in elementary school, so I decided to teach high school. That I discovered wasn't so much teaching um, as babysitting and, and behavior management, so I came to college and love it and love teaching here. Um, what major should you should a student decide to transfer do you think are most related to your program of study? So I think the the stereotype sort of, of what can you do with an English major, most students when they ask that, their, their answer in their head is already, you can be a teacher. To be a teacher you need a degree in education or teaching. So that's how I can teach. To teach at a university level or college level, um, you actually don't need a degree in teaching, you need a degree in your field. So it is actually, so I'm going to talk more about the English major than education major. Um, with English, yes, you can be a teacher. I'm proof of that, so I can work as an English teacher. But I think that's very narrow, and my other answer is extremely broad and general, um, which can scare some students because it's like, I want a specific career. But what's nice about an English major is it doesn't necessarily set you up for or pigeonhole you for one career. It gives you the type of skills that I would argue will be needed in almost any career. Um, we will do questions at the end, so I, I don't mean to ignore you. Um, for example, the things you're going to learn in English are, one, primarily clear communication, both orally and in, in writing. So what career are you going to have where you won't have to ever write, whether it's an email to a boss or something to a prospective client? Um, you're going to learn how to use rhetoric and make arguments. The argument doesn't mean you're yelling and shouting at someone. It means being able to convince someone of your point using um, different types of logic, reasoning, um, being able to explain yourself, develop ideas. And most importantly, I would argue, is employers want critical thinking skills. That is what we teach in English. At College Level English, I'm not teaching a whole bunch of grammar. By the time you're here, you should be able to write sentences and stuff, so the basic things you think of with English. It's more the analysis, the development of thought. Um, possible career paths, I, I looked some stuff up. Um, 
you can be, well, paralegals, honestly, anything to do with arguing, um, legals, a lot of lawyers, a lot of people study English, anything to do with public relations, brand management, advertising, customer service. Um, right now, the CEO of Instagram, NBC, Avon, Xerox, MTV, and Disney all have English majors. Um, you can go into the creative fields, too. So while it doesn't have to be um, theater or, or something like that, a lot of actors, um, English allows you to flex your creative muscles. So I think the, the skills that you learn are myriad and universally applied. So while I say you can get most any job, not the ones. Like if you take, uh, to be a nurse, you gotta get a nursing degree. There are those very specified fields, but really in general, an English major shows that you have the types of soft skills, the critical thinking, the communication skills, um, that the analysis skills that you will need in any job. You can solve problems, you can think outside the box, you can analyze things from various perspectives and explain them to people in various different ways and probably be pretty convincing at it. So I like to say I'm an expert arguer. Um, that's what English has given me. Never in any career will I be asked, uh, what's the theme of Lord of the Flies? <laughs> You're gonna have to take English 102. You're gonna analyze literature, but that's not about preparing you to analyze short stories for your jobs or even teaching them. It's about teaching you to think in that creative, analytical way that you probably will have to do in every job. I think I answered a whole bunch at once. Um, what recommendations do recommendations for a student considering earning a degree in your area? <coughs> Go for it. Don't think, again, I'm repeating, but don't think you have to be pigeonholed of, oh God, if I get an English major, I'm gonna be a poor starving artist, a poor writer, or a, a poor teacher, all of them are poor. You will be very, very marketable. I really do believe that, not just because it's my job. I went into the teaching field, but English majors, I really do think, are highly coveted for the critical thinking more than anything else. How many time? All right. Who's next? Who's on the list? Professor Labiano. Question? Yeah. No. question? question? Oh. Uh, We're going to save questions for the end. Oh, Q&A at the end? Yeah. Just All right. Everybody <clears throat> just to know. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, my name is Angelo, and... Um, I've been teaching languages for about 30 years or so at different levels. Uh, what brought me to this field, <clears throat> it's something I guess you've been thinking as well, is like, you know, how do I choose my major, right? And uh, for me, what worked was doing it the opposite. <coughs> I, I went by what I didn't like, <laughs> not by what I liked. And I go, math, uh-uh. Uh, philosophy, um, I don't know, <laughs> history, uh, and biology. So at, at the end, I was left with a couple, and one of them was for languages. And then I considered how remarkable is that? I mean, what kind of professions are out there? Would I be stuck professionally with that degree, not knowing what to do, and all that? And as uh, history has proven, I'm very happy I made that choice. Uh, we're talking about I graduated in, 19, in the 80s. So back then, there was no internet, no cell phones, and none of that stuff. Uh, as it turns out, all this technology we use today has to do, includes languages. Uh, American corporations are very uh, known and famous around the world. Look at your cell phones. Uh, you have, you can do your setup, but you find all languages, Chinese, like uh, German, anything at all. Uh, so. Uh, knowing languages today is something that um, it really applies to anything that's got to do with people. Uh, back in the day, people used to take a language, Spanish for example, because I'm going to Cancun, right? And I want to know some Spanish like agua por favor or uh, tequila, or whatever that is. Um, now, besides still be able to do that uh, professionally, companies really treasure having students with at least a minor in Spanish. Ideally, uh, from a, a uh, professional perspective, a student having a business degree with Spanish as a minor, <coughs> fabulous, fabulous. Uh, now, what about the other languages? Uh, well, French, German, Chinese, all that, obviously very, very important. Historically, we are in a phase in the world right now where, because of the influx coming from Spanish countries, Spanish has become kind of the second language, most spoken language in the country. Uh, to the point that today, uh, you go on, I don't know, uh, the social services, the state of Connecticut, social services, uh, website, they have everything in Spanish, I mean, in English and Spanish. 
Uh, I brought some uh, literature with me, for example, to, to show you what can I do uh, with the foreign language degree. Legal. Uh, I don't know if you've seen ever on TV commercials, Se Habla Español, when uh, some attorneys are actually advertising their services. Um, marketing. Uh, the medical profession, Yale University, uh, Yale Hospital in, in, in uh, New Haven, constantly looking for interpreters who can actually work for them and translate for doctors and patients because believe it or not, Yale and Connecticut especially is one of the best places where to find um, top of the notch uh, world-renowned doctors. So people come here from all over the world and they don't speak the English language. So the, the hospital needs uh, personnel that tell them, take this pill once a day, not three times a day. That's why you didn't do so well yesterday. Uh, before your meals, after your meals, all, all those things, of Im crucial information for these patients. So the medical field, absolutely. The internet, uh, Amazon, Walmart, uh, Target, all renowned around the world. Uh, Apple, I think Apple has a 52 sites in, in, with 52 different foreign languages. Uh, if you go to the Apple website, they have all the flags pretty much of the whole world. Are you clicking on any flag? And you have the Apple website it's written in that language, whatever language that is. So how can you go wrong in, in, in majoring, or at least minoring in Spanish? Uh, in some professions, it's almost a requirement uh, to not only academic, but also professional uh, in knowing some Spanish. Otherwise, you get a look like, how come you don't know Spanish? Because <laughs> today, it's become almost a given that a lot of people know Spanish. So uh, if I were to redo it all over again, 30 years later, I would do exactly the same choices I made. No, I wouldn't change a thing at all. Um, so, this will have to share with you. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Who's next? I don't know. There was like a list. Like oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, hi. I'm John Schaefer, again, and I teach uh, uh, communications and media. Um, <coughs> I, all, I used to teach philosophy, so that's why we're talking about philosophy now, as mentioned. Um, I also happen to be program coordinator for the theater program, and I oversee the audio and music uh, area as well. And um, let, let me, as, and you can probably guess, I have a little bit of a kind of diverse uh, interest and diverse background, and actually that goes all the way back to when I was in um, even high school and college. And, I was actually a humanities major officially, although I was actually also an English major, English literature and theater and film um, were, all, were all part of my majors. And I would actually say those are all tied together because they all focus on story, storytelling. And I would say that's, that's the major theme in my, um, my kind of approach um, is that I think you know, in our culture and society and history, storytelling has been really fundamental to the human experience, and and it starts, you know, with the written word, the written stories, and but then we enact them, and so theater has, is one form of the way we enact that, and film and media is another way. That's really the current method. As a matter of fact, people unfortunately don't read too much uh, these days, as much, or I shouldn't say as much as they might have used to. But they love to watch stories. Of course, all those stories were written by people, and they've usually been adapted from novels or, or, or other forms of writing. Um, so I was, I've been interested in all of those things. And then, you know, the other side of me is that I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in meaning. You know, what is the meaning of things? And that's kind of where the philosophy comes in. So uh, because, uh, you know, it, it, from my point of view and from uh, both as a teacher and educator, it's not not just do we have stories to tell, but what do they mean? You know, and what is why are we doing certain things that we do? And um, I actually think that a lot of our novels, our stories, um, films, and media, you know, the ones that matter to us are the ones that have some form of deeper meaning, and and they are philosophical. They do probe into questions, and unfortunately, I'm not sure that we give that enough, as enough time or attention. Um, but anyway, you know, 
as I said, I studied, um, I studied theater, English, film in college, including going on to graduate school where I, I did film and media. Um, I have worked in the film and, film and media industries on uh, various, and I actually lived for a year in France um, and really had to learn French, so, uh, <clears throat> which is one of the reasons why I always say it's really good to study languages so you, uh, you can get by because, you know, when you're, in, when you're suddenly in another country and they don't speak English very much, then you're going, oh, okay, well, I really gotta, gotta learn this language. So um, I, did, I did learn some French when I lived in France for a year. And I worked in the film industry in where, France. Where did you live? Actually, Paris mostly. Nice choice. Although I traveled nice. around. Nice it's nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Italy was one of my other favorite countries though that I visited. Oh, yeah. Still so I, and I always, by the way, I did spend, uh, not only did I work in <laughs> France for a year, but I, I went to, um, when I was in college as an undergraduate, I spent a year studying in England. That's where I st studied Shakespeare and and uh, the English drama and, and you know went, would go and uh, we read read a Shakespeare play and then we go and see it performed by the Royal Shakespeare Company. It's the best way to study Shakespeare. So, um, but the point being that I view that as one of the most important uh, years of my life was the study abroad um, and, and living in England was really uh, eye-opening experience. So I always highly recommend um, to people to c consider doing that. Where did that get me? Well, um, besides just having all kinds of adventures, living abroad for a couple of years and um, working and living, uh, but I, I ultimately, you know, I actually worked in advertising for a year. I was working in children's television for a couple of years. I was, um, you know, making various films. I've worked with Connecticut Public Television, so I have done a lot of professional work in my time, but I have also uh, decided that, you know, the best strategy for me to actually make a living on a continuous basis would be <coughs> going into education, and that's how I kind of ended up, ended up here. <clears throat> and uh, certainly I would say, uh, one of the things I tell my students is, you know, we, we are living in a media world, of course, right now. We're, our lives are dominated by media, social media, uh, and various forms of digital media, and computers. So certainly, the more knowledge and um, background you have in that, I think it's going to apply to many different jobs and fields. Most businesses now are using media extensively for advertising, for education, to commuters. Yes, I'm gonna watch my time here. I'll just keep going on. So, um, you know, I always think it's extremely valuable, but if you want to get in marketing and, and other areas um, to, to have as much media knowledge as possible, and that it can definitely help you get jobs. There's lots of jobs in those particular areas and fields. Um, a lot of people just wanna say, oh, I wanna be a filmmaker. I know at one point that's what I wanted. I wanted to be one of the, you know, I wanted to be a, the next Steven Spielberg. Um, but uh, it's it's hard to work in the movie, in the film industry, um, and I did work in the film industry for uh, a year or two. And you know, it's it's constantly you're constantly trying to get uh, your next job. It's not steady, and um, it's, you, you know you're working. You might be working 12 hours a day for six days a week for very intense for a month or two. Then you're unemployed, you know, and you have nothing going and. Uh, so it's really hard to balance um, a reasonable lifestyle with some of these kinds of careers and fields. So and that's one of the reasons I ended up in education. But all right, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. And who wants to, who wants to go next? Yeah, I'd like to build on uh, some points John made. Uh, I'd just like to say I was an illustrator for 18 years, working in advertising and publishing. And it was never steady. It was feast or famine. And when the work came, it'd be an all-nighter or a double all-nighter. So that was brutal. But I was an illustrator alone. Nowadays, um, people, are, that was a long time ago, people are expected to be graphic designers, illustrators, web designers. And if you do that field, um, then uh, you have a better chance of steady employment. Now, I would like to jump back to a common theme. You were just saying that running through this is I actually have a master's in German and I studied in Vienna as an undergrad for a semester and that's what got me into art because I always knew I was talented but 
I did not feel the full emotional impact to my soul until I was in Vienna, which is just art everywhere. So I came home and told my parents I'm switching my major from German to art, and that didn't go over well. Anyway, I did go ahead. I got my master's in German, which helped me after I got my MFA from City uh, Brooklyn College at City University of New York. Um, that helped me get a grant to spend a year studying at the Art Academy of Munich. So. I don't know, it was a roundabout way, but I kind of, it was rich. It was a very rich way, and it gives you a broader view. My minor was in music, and with all of this, I think I have a deeper idea of the common structures and all the art. So I don't think you guys need to worry about limiting <coughs> yourselves too much, because especially in the community college experience, who knows at 18 or 19 what you want to do? Come here where it's cheap, get a smorgasbord of classes and figure out what you want to do. And somehow, all the different disciplines, I think, will come together. It's not so linear. And I'd also like to point out that we are entering a time where AI is overtaking everything. So you could get, no, you could get specialty training in a technical field, which is then, archaic, you know, this is taken over by AI. This is a problem. So what you really need to do is be grounded in, an, um, I would say, the humanities, where you can go out, have acquire the critical thinking skills to navigate, because nothing's going to be settled. You're not going to have 30 years in a company anymore. You're not going to be able to get a certificate in a specialty field. Uh, no offense to STEM, which I totally support that in manufacturing. But at the same time, you need to have those deeper critical thinking skills and you need to be able to do research. Everything that comes from uh, uh, a critical thinking background is going to help you navigate these waters. Um, and I would just like to point out some of the fields before I run out of time. Some exciting news is with the consolidation of the community colleges, there are some specialty degrees. They are going to be offering um, the St Connecticut State College a degree in illustration. Now, we won't be able to accommodate everybody in illustration, but I teach the first illustration class with my background in illustration. And then you just go someplace else to Manchester and take illustration too. That's the beauty of this consolidation. There's also going to be a degree in photography. Now, what can you do with photography? Well, the people I know who do wedding photography make a lot of money. A lot of money. Now, photography can be scary because you have to spend a fortune on equipment. So you just have to be aware. But I do know the, the one application where people can make a lot of money. Illustration, I already discussed because I just wanted to jump on what John was saying. Illustration has changed since I was an illustrator. And it's, um, you just have to uh, have, you know, give them the kitchen sink. You have to know everything, but you know it's good to be an in-house uh, graphic designer with illustration skills because they want somebody who can do everything. Um, there's also a degree in graphic design. Now, even if you get a degree in graphic design, you may want to couple that with a business degree because every, just about every professional degree benefits from training in graphic design. You have to be a strong writer and you have to have good layout skills, promotional skills. They also have the TAP degree, and at Housatonic, they're developing a certificate in museum studies. So I think that's very exciting. That's, that's in the works. Uh, we're always going to have museums. But if you want to work in a museum, you have to have good writing skills, good communication skills, good graphic design skills. So I'm putting forth the image of a well-rounded individual with critical thinking skills and all the other necessary um, skill sets that will complement it. Um, and I would like to mention that the biggest thing, if you want to succeed in artists, you have to work hard. We've had students, if you don't work hard, if you're mediocre with an art degree, I don't know where that's going to get you. But we have one student who was just an amazing artist, April Sh uh, Chateauneuf, who's now the uh, scenic artist at uh, Goodsby Opera House. That's a hard to get job. I have another one who has her own jewelry business and she sells to museums. You know, it's a high-end jewelry business. Uh, that's Aisley McLaughlin. Uh, Joe Cunningham, one of our graphic design people, is the graphic designer at the State uh, Department of Environmental Protection. 
that's a good job. So you can do well, but if you want to go into art, I just want to say, I want to conclude, on a deeper level, you have to have good, strong niche skills. Mike DiGiorgio, who teaches watercolors, is a world-renowned bird illustrator. He knows everything about birds. That's his niche. It's not enough just to have art skills. Okay, I said writing, graphic design, everything. But he has technical, scientific understanding of birds, and he's made that his field, and his works are gorgeous. So he's in Brazil now doing the bird work. Uh, Wendy Hill, one of our instructors, was a medical illustrator at Yale. Medical illustration is a terrific field. Now that's gone all digital. It used to be airbrushed. That's completely digital, so you'll like that one. But it is a great field. And um, I know a lot of students want to become animators. And I just want, I'm talking fast. If you want to be an animator, you don't just do your own little cartoons. You have to be trained in classical figure drawing, which I teach. All right, you have to know the anatomy, the artistic anatomy. They don't want to see your personal cartoons. They're going to want to see your figure drawing skills, which has to be classically trained. Um, let's see, is there anything else? But film industry, I don't know how. There's a lot, an army of painters and sculptors if you want to do that. I don't know how steady that is. You know more about the working conditions for artists in the film industry than I would. But there certainly are a lot of them. But I would say you could get steady work as an animator, but you've got to have that strong portfolio. Um, is there anything else? I think I mentioned everything. I think I covered it. Woo. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. I got a timer here. That's why I'm looking down. Sorry, it's Brittany pointed <laughs> us. So I, I'll be good. I'm the last person, right? No, then there's questions. Yeah. I want to go again, too. What? No. All right, anyway, I'm Rick Erickson, and what am I doing? I, that's my joke. I come in, I'm like, I do a lot of different things. But yeah, supposedly new media production, or media production, or really John does a lot of what I do, and I do a lot of potentially the media side, and, and then also what Judith is doing, and I'll just echo, yeah, English. Oh, yeah, and language. It's funny, the thread. And if that's the one thing, the thread is really important. So, uh, my background in a nutshell, what did I go to school for? Film and video. I too was going to maybe do what you were thinking of doing. It's funny, I didn't go for digital media production. I didn't, I could even say something like this and I'll blow you away. Oh, you know, I really didn't touch a computer when I was in school unless I had a quarter slot. You know, and, uh, and so then, uh, but then how did I get into the gig? How did I work? I don't know. I, I, I spent, so I went to school and I learned the film video, that sort of thing. But then when I got out, I really wanted to do the freelance thing, which is actually what John was talking about. Where, yes. Like the, oh, okay, you work for a couple months on a project and then bam, you're onto something new. I will tell you that is awesome. It's not negative, it is awesome. When you're young and you have energy and I find myself, hmm, wow, I'm in Argentina and I'm hanging out building graphics for ESPN2 at that time and the next I'm in another place doing stuff. It was awesome, but it was a problem because it was. I was young. It, it was three, Could yeah, you do that for three weeks and then bam, now I'm in California and I'm now working some other sporting event or some graphic gig. So it is traveling, a lot of traveling, mm -hmm. a lot of hours, but it's awesome. It really is awesome when you're young and, yeah. and, and you have the energy. Um, now, obviously, uh, that could change. But it's really a meeting like you get old and then you ultimately want a, a job teaching. So in a nutshell, <laughs> what did I actually do? I did a lot of that. I worked actually ESPN, ABC, a bunch of different places doing you know graphics, te mostly television, motion graphics, set design, a lot of stuff. And that weaves into, the whole point is, I went, I got a degree in a related field, related field, and then actually once I got out, said, all right, let me start doing this freelance thing, and then realized, wait a sec, they need a lot of graphic sort of computer stuff was just starting to, to hit, and I was like, I really like this. Anyway, it was interesting, because that was really where things started. Once I tacked into the interest, I tied that with what the degree I had. I spent a year in the woods studying and digesting as much as I could about that topic because there was no degree. <laughs> now did I age myself there? There really was no degree in digital arts at that time. So I was sitting there with computers that could do 16 colors, animating little flowers, singing and dancing. And then I sent that off with uh, to uh, some folks 
who, believe it or not, I met because my neighbor knew someone who knew someone. Now, this is really saying, why do I go to school and why do I get a degree? I never ever would have gotten the interview unless I knew that person, but I never would have gotten the interview if I didn't have the piece of paper. I wouldn't even have made it through the door. I had a, I had a portfolio, I had things I could show, but they didn't even want to talk to people unless they had a minimum educational degree. And I thought, that's stupid. Come on, look at all the cool stuff we get, you know, I could do, and whatever. But anyway, that was really important. That got me through the, the door, and then I was able to show the reel, and, you know, the stupid, crazy stuff that I had been doing for a year. The internship was really important. That would be another thing. While I was at school, I did an internship. I didn't do an internship at a film video place. I actually did an internship at an animation company. I did stop motion animation. I really loved stop motion animation, but I wasn't an animator, and I'd never done it before. But I said, sure, I'll take that, that intern uh, position. And they basically taught, you know, kind of, filled me in with what I, I had to do, and I was like, hmm, okay, I can do this. Point being is, guess what? Did that gig, that gig led to uh, full-time through all of these these areas I never would have been involved in. Uh, media production environments, doing set design, I had no idea how to do that. But through the exposure of the degree, all of these things, I was able to really tap into creative problem solving. And that's you, everyone has sort of said that. And any opportunity that I, I was able to <coughs> see within these fields, because you guys, what was it? It's, it's Photoshop, Illustrator, digital imaging, audio, animating. Oh, wait a sec, I gotta take photos? We're doing headshots over the shoulders? Wait a sec, I need graphics that are five times that size? I have to, I'm not sure how to do that, but I will figure it, we will, we will figure it out. Well, you know, yeah, and I wasn't saying that to the people who were saying we need to do that. I was nodding my head saying I have a foundation of skills that I should be able to figure that out. And that really ties to the last question, which I'm not quite at, and now I'll race to those others. What can you do? Oh my gosh. Every company under the sun, especially the smaller ones, need media producers, or what I tend to call media producing generalists. Someone who actually knows the tech stuff first. Like, hey, are you delivering the right format? Is it in the right size? Does it have actually all the requirements that it actually needs? And then, by the way, hardest actual, I think, the hardest actual, one of the hardest degrees in professions, do you have an art artistic aesthetic? Do you have a creative aesthetic that sits on, on top of a technical aesthetic, right? And most people don't actually have that, right? So, because I want to be an artist. Why would I want to know about numbers and sizes and, why would I need to know how to write an email or a proposal in order to get the job, in order to be able to actually deliver the artistic piece that's got to be on a set by the end of the week, and if it isn't, I'll never work again, because that's how media production works. It's hard, it's fun, it's fast, but there is absolutely no slack room. No. So and, and it's on the fly and it's learning things. So where do you go? What do you do? You pick a, uh, so I, I came here and I said, I don't even know what I'm doing. Could be graphic design, could be communication, could be English. But really what it is, it's media production. And it's having a utility belt so that if you need to deal with imagery because your client, or better than your client, your full-time position, which is structural graphics down in Deep River, because you were lucky enough to get a full-time, position that's permanent, you will be doing lots of things. You'll be taking photos of the actual uh, product that they build, you'll actually be animating that, you'll cut the video for that, you'll probably have to get the copy from maybe the marketing people, you'll have to actually probably be the person who has to post that to the four different social media places, then you'll also probably have to produce in the layout of maybe the magazine, the brochure, the sell piece, whatever that is. Oh my gosh, wait a sec, that was photography, that was Photoshop, digital stuff, animation, Oh, wait a sec, they want to actually do audio? I know my time's over, but the point being <laughs> is, right? Point being is, get into a, a major, do as much as you possibly can, try not to stay, stay stuck. What places could you go? I'd say get the heck out of the state. Practice as much as possible. But no, Eastern's got a new media program. Mm -hmm. You could swap, you could move your, uh, what you've done here into that, or oh, Central's are pretty solid too. I want to say six, seven in this new merger, communication areas, but communications, media studies, there's media production just straight out, and then there's schools that are very focused and specific, and those all base themselves on, well, how much did you do while you were here? 
How many image, images have you created? How much have you animated? How much audio have you produced? How much have you written? Because honestly, if you've only done it five or six times, it's really difficult to get into the tough schools. It's really difficult to actually go up against other people who've been designing for a while. So right now, right now is when you want to be doing as much as you possibly can in order to create and develop whatever your aesthetic is, whatever that written word aesthetic is, however you can speak to people in that particular way, however you want to create your just original aesthetic to be able to make money, right? And then, well, you probably want to be able to speak, make music, make image, you know, create imagery, all of the above. But anyway, it is, it's, you know what, it's new media production. I'm down in the basement over there in Chapman. It's a lot of fun. We try to have a lot of fun. I don't know, that's it. Oh, you want to go, you want to double up? Um, uh, you said it. That was a great job synthesizing everything. Okay. Yeah. Anything anybody at the panelists want to comment on before we take some questions? Anyone? Um, I also studied abroad in high school. I spent a semester in Spain. It was amazing. So I know this is a career, but that came, that came up with just about everyone. Um, living abroad is a fantastic thing. That's my one of my biggest recommendations for students. If you have the chance, it expands your horizon, gives you new experiences, gives you new perspectives. So it's not something to major in, but travel anyway. Travel. Like with John, like I also spent a year normally, uh, and um, there is like a phenomenal federal found a program called the Fulbright Program, uh, sponsored by the, the government. If you guys go to their website, there's plenty of opportunities for you to choose from any any part of the world, really. Again, the Fulbright Program. That's uh, what I got my um, uh, it, it's, study uh, abroad. I agree Fulbright. with everybody. You will never forget this one year you spent in a foreign country. Never, never will. Yeah. That'll be our next panel, where to yeah. go. <laughs> 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 any questions? Any, any good beer. <laughs> You were holding yours. I hope you didn't I know, forget. I, I appreciate it. Um, my first question about careers, like, is there any opinions about NFTs since that's digital paintings and such? All right, yeah. Here's the deal. It is a personal perspective. NFT is like, for me, it would be like any particular, uh, let's say, art that you were going to potentially sell. It has value to some people. It has no value to other people. I, I don't have so many, I wouldn't necessarily comment so much on NFTs. I'd actually go, it's interesting, the AI comment that Judy threw out. I would say, yeah, we could be frightened of that. It is going to displace a lot of creative people. But at the same time, those positions will be actually filled by individuals like yourself who could prompt correctly, who could work those tools, the AI, correctly to actually achieve the results that actually you need to get from that tool. All the AI stuff, the NFT. NFT is tricky because it's not really a tool other than a way to make money off of other people. But that's another discussion altogether. But mm -hmm. it is, it, it really is something where uh, one year from now, it might not be NFTs, but it's going to be some other component, and hopefully your foundational skills are such that you could adapt to, oh, new technology, new yeah, tool, right. new whatever the heck that is that you have to, you know, actually start to be creative with. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I have a question for English. Yeah. Um, so about with careers for English, isn't there like, like for English, you could you be a script writer? Sure. Story writer? Sure. Keep naming them. I'm going to say sure, because like I said. I, I, I can name a lot. I, I, oh, yeah. The key yeah, the would be thing. name something, and he says no. He doesn't say sure. Yeah. N I, nurse. I, 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 I have zero what? Yeah. A specific technical like, training like, skills. You, you said it yourself that, like, you said it yourself that, like, like, getting an English degree for some people might not think it's worth it, but. Yeah. I think, like I said. I, I, I see, I can see some opportunities. The really, I think what I heard from everybody too to synthesize was it's not so much about learning a specific trade that is marketable in one specific field where you go into this career. It's about learning skills that are applicable almost universally. And I think every one of our fields, and because we're all sort of in the humanities rather than STEM and nothing wrong with that, but we, it's learning those skills, um, whether they be planning and structure and delivery of content, whether it's in writing, in speaking, in art, in music, in a foreign language, it's getting this broad base of skills that will make you marketable in any industry. There's no industry that doesn't need to advertise things, that doesn't need to market things, that doesn't need to deal with customers or consumers in some level where you need these different 
people skills, and again, I, I stress the, the basic critical thinking skills and having that broad base of knowledge. Uh, so if, again, if you keep naming, can you do this with English? Can you do that? I'm, I'm probably gonna nod my head and say yes. Yeah. Um, In fact, though, if I may interject, like, I, I'm, I've noticed over the years how different disciplines are kind of coming together. Mm -hmm. uh, making, like, as you can see here, this panel here, we're all different disciplines, but in our culture, the way it's developing, I think the new uh, professionals of the future uh, wanted to have to know a little bit of everything you see here and then more. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not done by design. Uh, that is how culture has developed over the years. So that you have uh, and communications and the arts and, and German and, and, and Paris. And all. So all, all that, it's, it, it's uh, amazing how everything is coming together uh, without even Again, just thinking, planning it, it just happened that way, and you are in the right place as we speak right now. Can I add something? Of course. Uh, yeah, I do have a question. What's your thoughts about, like, with maybe some, some of the digital arts majors, like, not having, like, color? They should have color theory. Color theory? Yeah, you're going to you know, push me on that one. I mean, how could you not understand how colors change each other and affect each other? <laughs> So I recommend color theory for everybody. I just want to say just one quick comment that I think we need to have good writing skills and good presentation computer graphic skills, not just for our job, but to be good citizens. Because, you know, I'm involved in a lot of environmental groups and I need my education as a decent technical writer. You have to be a good technical writer just as a good citizen and to be able to do layout. Yeah, here I am. Um, we'll let him talk. I'm, I'm getting the wrap up. Else? Let me just, uh, uh, just make one quick, quick comment, uh, Devin, just to kind of build on what somebody else says. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think I've realized over the years uh, dealing both in education and, and in career paths and, and whatnot is that, um, you know, most employers don't actually care that much about what your undergraduate major is. Really, the threshold is: Do you have a certain level of a degree? Do you, yep. you know, and, and and certainly that's not to say that there are not specific areas that require specific training. If you're going to go into rad tech or yeah. uh, ODD or something like that, you need very specific training in that area, and you can get that in two years or or, or whatnot. But for most jobs, they they really they're looking: Do you have an associate's degree? Do you have a bachelor's degree? But they don't actually care what your degree is. They just care that you've had this well-rounded education, you can do critical thinking, you can write, you can communicate, um, you know, a little math, all these kinds of things are essential skills. Then it really comes down to what have you done? You know, so you have to think, you do have to develop a certain skill set and you have to have had certain types of experiences that employers will be looking for. But a lot of times they won't, they don't even care, you know, like I said, what your major was. So, but the importance is that you have gotten yourself this well-rounded education. So I just want to throw that out there. Great note to end on. We are running out of time. Um, thank you to Career Services for sponsoring this event. To uh, everyone at, on the panel, to those of you who showed up. Obviously, we all um, are happy to talk a lot and happy to talk to you individually. So if anybody has any questions, I don't hesitate to reach out to us or any disciplines who weren't here. Any faculty member would love to talk to you and, and answer any questions you have um, honestly and candidly. And thank you again. Okay.